of, of everything, really. I mean, it, it was the finish of the BBL and the uh, WBBL um, with the Sixers and the Adelaide Strikers, respectively, going out champions um, of their respective competitions, um, which is absolutely outstanding for both clubs. I mean, the Sixers did it again uh, in the Women's League, but as for the as for the Men's League, first time the Adelaide Strikers have ever won uh, the BBL, which is hard to believe, considering a couple of seasons ago they were just so dominant. Yeah. Um, yeah, real. It wasn't like them. Like, we're talking about the Scorchers, right? How they lost to Hobart before that? Yeah, 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 yeah which is oh, that's very, very unlike the Scorchers. Yeah. Talking about dominance, like, they were, we all expect them to go into the game against Hobart. That is the favourite. They, they've got it in the bag. Oh. Um, Particularly the lost. new Optus Stadium, mm. you know, as well. They must have had some of those fish fingers before the game, you know. Yeah. Well, the Scorchers just can't win the Optus Stadium. They just they can't. They can't. It's, it's, just, it's, it's a curse. Be... It seems to be a cursed little hoodoo around that yeah. stadium, but it, it's good. It, it's better than, you know, a team having a, an unbelievable dominance mm. there. It just makes things a little bit more interesting yeah. for the future. Um, well, yeah, we'll start off with the men's and Adelaide. Yeah, after oh. finishing first two years in a row, then choking both years, um, got over the Renegades by a run in an absolute, an absolute clinic. That was incredible. Yep, and then plays Hobart. Um, Jake Weather- Weatherand. Yeah, yeah, That's Jakey, right. Jakey Weber ruled. Yeah, 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 yeah. Weber and whatever his name is. Um, 115 was... runs, you can't beat that, pretty much. I gotta say, I gotta say, Liam, he's had a very good season, despite despite not putting away a ton until the very last game. I mean, he's obviously saved his best for last, um, but an incredible 115, only off 70 deliveries as well, which is just even more astonishing. Um, players like Travis Head and uh, even Alex Kerry were just able to take a back seat to his absolute batting masterclass really at much. Adelaide Oval, and the entire Oval was just in absolute awe of him. You know, he had, he had a little bit of aura, you know, shining off him, and uh, you know, we don't see that many centuries. Um, particularly in crunch matches. Um, but he did break a number of records, including the highest score in a BBL knockout game and the third highest of all time in the BBL. So if you congratulations don't mind. to him. With a, you know, just a, just a solid, you know, sixes um, in the final. Um, I think eight went over the rope, which is just... <laughs> Pretty amazing. Yeah. And a couple into the crowd as well. Um, pretty much Hobart was never really in the chase. No. Nah. All out for 100 and... Oh, I've got 117 here, but it's 177. They, look, uh, look, look yeah. they, they batted very valiantly. Mm. Um, you know, at times you thought, you know, Darcy Short could potentially, you know, be the match winner and take it yeah. away from him. Even George Bailey. Um, bit of a surprise him coming in at number three, I thought. But um, he batted pretty well. Mm. Um, I was looking for the... Again, I don't like seeing this, but Peter Siddle playing for a team that's not Melbourne. It's wrong on so many levels. But he's three oh, from 70. Bill Laurie would be outraged. <laughs> He'd be like, he's a Victorian, he's a hero, what's yeah. he doing in Adelaide? Because you know, <laughs> it's very rare for a Victorian to it get into, into the New South Wales Western Australian cricket team. It is. It's, it's very rare. <laughs> but honestly, that's the only way yeah. a lot of Victorians can actually get a game, is, is by going to a different state. Um, but his three for 17 probably would have got a man of the match if it wasn't for the century. That's right. That's uh, right. Um, lucky to get one of those wickets. I thought the one against Ben McDermott was easily going down leg side. But uh, no, no DRS in... Um, yes. T20, so um, had to had to walk, unfortunately, Pretty did much. McDermott. But, uh, uh, yeah, Peter Siddle just um, just kept the pressure on and just an incredible amount of dot balls as well. I think he bowled something like 15 dot balls and uh, got short with his very final delivery of his four-over spell. So three for 17. That's match winning in any yep. ground. Well, it's actually funny when we get to the women's mm. um, a bit later because um, the winner, the man, the, well, the woman of the match mm. in the women's one got three for 17. So How about that? Yeah. Reciprocal figures. That's that's just absolutely incredible. But it was it was the bowling effort that was probably yeah. most impressive for me. You know, to keep down the uh, Hurricanes, who who are a very batting heavy lineup, um, did very very well. But uh, they I think the their pivotal, bowling was yeah, bad. The bowling they weren't the same great, bowlers that defeated Perth. No, it was completely different. I think mm. I think Rogers definitely wasn't the same. And uh, we talk about pivotal moments in finals, Liam, and we talk about. A major drop catch. Now, Weverold was absolutely flying at this stage, and uh, and Rogers got a nice little return catch to him, dropped it, and then went to go for the run out because uh, Travis Head was. Oh, I mean, he, he probably would have made. He got, it. he got a bit ahead of himself. He got a little bit ahead of himself, <laughs> and he probably would have made it in all fairness if he if he dived um, head first. Um, <laughs> but as it turns out, when oh, Rogers no. threw the ball at the stumps, uh, completely missed, and Joffrey Archer was just watching the, the drop catch, had his hands on his head, ball went flying past him, managed to save it, but still three runs and a and two missed chances. Wow. Um, it was a big moment. Yeah, and they win their first um, championship. 
Fun fact, the Renegades are the only team now to not play finals. Wow. Yeah. Well, the big dance. Yeah, they, the they haven't dance. they haven't quite got Hobart's there. made it twice for two losses. Um, Hobart, Stars, and now Renegades are the three teams that he has not yet lifted the trophy. Wow, wow. So they would they would want to get their act together in the next couple mm. of years. Because I tell you what, the Adelaide Strikers, they've got some amazing depth. And even though Rashid Khan um, does go uh, out to international commitments now, uh, it's just incredible how um, how they've just been able to find all these players like Colin Ingram, uh, even Alex Kerry wasn't really known before this tournament, um, and even Rashid Khan, the, the excitement package from Afghanistan. You know, he's done an absolutely outstanding job. And um, we will get to the international T20 later, but um, Billy, big Billy Stanlake, um, was bowling some absolute heat against uh, the Kiwis. So even he, for the strikers, um, was an absolutely outstanding find. And, uh, find and uh, yeah, gets another great season under his belt. So I think the Adelaide strikers, I'll tell you what, they're looking like the team to beat going into next season. Mm. Um, another team to beat is the Sydney Sixers for the women. Oh, wow. Going back, they to, outstanding? Going back to back. And again, never in doubt. Um, they went... Um, Perth were two for well, all 20 overs, all out for 99. Oh, that's with, a um, pretty dismal total. With Sarah Coit. 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 Uh, yeah, best and grand efforts with three for 17. There you go, there you go. Um, and pretty much Elisa Healy came in, scored 41 off 32. Oof. Never in doubt, after 15 overs, one for 100, done. I tell you what, those Sixers openers with Elise Healy and Elise Perry, I think it's Elisa Healy and Elise Perry, but you've got a couple of similar sounding names there. They they are just incredible. And uh, they put on 36 runs in the first five overs, which really made the 64 runs from 10.1 overs very, very easy to catch. Um, and, uh, yeah, they, they pretty much just went off with an absolute bang for, for start, and it just um, it just made the uh, the task very, very difficult towards the end. But, you know, for, considering the scorches were for none for 23, to, to slump to four for 41, I mean, that's a, that's a huge collapse. Yep. And to only make 50 more runs after that as well, they'd be pretty disappointed with that effort because uh, Perth do pride themselves on, um, on need, doing well. They Perth. Exactly. Like, your football team stinks, so, you know, you got to <laughs> have some success. Uh, I mean, we will get to that later, but, um, yeah, it, it, yes. the West does seem to be capitulating a little bit at the yes. moment. But, you know, as uh, for all those listeners out there, um, a little visual update. Uh, Liam is still wearing the Frio Dockers colours, so um, he you got to stick by your team oh, no I, matter I've what, gone, through thick and thin. I've gone all in with Frio. It's been a lot of pain, not a lot of gain, but um, you, you, you've stuck you've stuck fit. Like, I've heard about this Premiership Cup people keep talking about. Yeah. One, one day I understand what they're talking about. It's a lustrous Premiership Cup. Yeah, it's premier- not easy to get. It's <laughs> definitely not easy to take all the way to the West, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, we'll wrap up quick with um, the under-19s. Australia ah, ended up losing very good. Um, by eight wickets to India. Oh, Australia yeah. were all out for 216. India did easy in 38 overs with two for 220. Sure. Majut Kala, um, just a lazy 101 not out of 102 balls. Oh, yeah. Pretty good, He's, almost a run a ball. Yeah, pretty much. Gave in the, the victory. And last night, Australia won with the DLS method. They did. They did. Um, 3 for 96, and New Zealand did score 9 for 117, but easy win for Australia. But even, but even still, 117, not a huge score. As I was saying before, big Billy Stanlake was huge. Um, as he Was he as is. huge as Stoinis? Stoinis is just a big lad. Stoin- you, just, you just love You're oh. over Stoinis, aren't you? you just oh, I love, love Stoinis. Stoinis. I, I love how he just chooses the gum. He's just got that kind of that... Arrogant look. The swagger about him, yeah. I love the swagger. He, he's, he's a great well, addition to the that The cricket squad. season's pretty much done. Does it? We've got, I think, two pretty more 2020s, but... Yep. And then we head off to New Zealand. Then we head off to New Zealand for the rest of that try series. So, yeah, so um, the cricket season's done and dusted for another year, pretty much. Pretty much, pretty much. It's all over. Of course, um, the the next big challenge will be, of course, uh, Australia over in South Africa. That it's going to be a, a huge test. Uh, India did actually have some success against South Africa in the recent tests. So it will be interesting to see how Australia do play against them. And uh, of course, here on the sports desk, we'll keep you absolutely fully oh, always, up to date, always up to date all, with all the test match, and uh, and we'll just see how our man. And uh, big Cam Bancroft goes as oh. well. He's, he's going to be under pressure, but he's, he's a man from the West. He'll hang in there. We, we yes. know that for sure. But, uh, yeah, the end of a, a very triumphant, um, would say, 2020 season um, yes. has came to a close. Very but good. It's, it's been very entertaining. We have enjoyed it. A lot of drop catches in the first half, but uh, good to see a lot of the players holding on besides uh, big Tommy Rogers. And but, uh, this song is dedicated to the oh, Indian yes. under-19 team. 
the Sydney Sixers women team and the LA Strikers men team. We are the champions by Queen here ah, on Sports Desk on good. Sin 90.7 FM. Monday morning. Welcome back to the Sports Desk on Sin 90.7 FM. Of course, you are here with Michael and Liam on your marvellous Monday morning. It's a beautiful Monday. It's beautiful. It's Super Bowl Monday. It's marvellous. Super Bowl today. Super Bowl today. I'm I'm very very excited. Of course, yes. the Eagles up against the Patriots, and uh, of course, our big man, um, big Tommy Brady. I mean, what can't this man do at the age of forty? I mean, he'll he'll play until 60, oh, 70. Yeah. yeah, you know, he's not retiring anytime soon. You know, MVP, um, and potentially the opportunity to grab all of those honors in one year whilst holding up that Premiership oh, Cup. Doing a Dusty Martin like it. Like, like he does, you know, absolutely. So so he's going to be uh, a lot of eyes on him mm. uh, during today and uh, also go. a lot of eyes on the ads. Yeah, so let's go back to Australia. Let's go back to Australia. And let's return to Australia. AFLW 2.0 started 2. on Friday 0, night. It yes. was probably, in my personal opinion, an extremely, extremely disappointing game. Yeah, yeah. Like the That's of, a very fair call. That's a very was, fair call. It was really boring. Yeah. Especially in the second half, nothing happened. Did you, did, you, did, you, uh, did you trek down to uh, Icon Park, Liam? No, no, no. no but you, you, you did watch it very, yes. very closely, what? and um, you yeah. were snoring on the couch by all reports. Yes. By our uh, <laughs> halftime. Oh, and I was kind of worried about how the season, maybe because we had such big expectations, because yeah. last season ended in such a high. I think two teams scored seventy. Oh, yeah. Um, the grand final was really good, and so, it was, and then this game started with a. The only interesting fact was, um, Jasmine Garner kicked mm. the first goal of the season for the second year in a row, for Collingwood. Fun lock fact. in, lock in. And also... Um, Someone would have won a deposit on their house, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Also got this. It doesn't sound like much, but mm. this is the first time in the history of the AFRW that Darcy Vesio is not the, the leading goal kicker. Wow. Now that now that is astounding. Mm. That is astounding. Well, I just think because she was, um, the whole season she was number one. No one touched her at all. No one wanted and to now, touch her. Now she didn't touch the ball. I've got to say, one of the most impressive things I've seen with the season so far is that players are, are ready to go after the absolute champions of the game. Mm. You know, the out-and-out out leaders of the games, the ones that, you know, are match-winning players, the ones that are practically untouchables. Um, are starting to get attention paid to, and we're going to get to the Melbourne GWS game soon, but um, oh, yeah, there was a big tagging effort in that game against um, one of the game's leading players, uh, Daisy Pierce. So it could be something that we do begin to see a little mm. bit more because, um, you know, if, if, it, if, it, if it potentially restricts the opposition uh, to quite a score, it's worked in the AFL and it probably will work in the AFLW, which has been encouraging. But I think, um, yeah, this first game, uh, they only got 19,000, which is still a, a great number. Well, a lot but, of people um, were outside because they did have an outside TV in that. So there's a couple of thousand yeah. more outside. And it was ground. a pretty nice night, actually. Mm. It, was, it was quite a nice night. The ground's the in good nick, though. The ground's in oh. very good nick. Uh, they didn't have those, those massive... Um, kind of, you know, uh, temporary light towers like they used to. Mm. It's all it's all looking very, very flashbang. Um, but the big thing from this game, you know, 3-4-22 to 2-2-14. So, as you said, Liam, only five goals, goals scored for the game. No and, goals uh, in the... I think and no, no goals in the second half? Yes. Absolutely no goals Carlton in the second half. Carlton kicked one point in the second half, I'm pretty sure. And I think the girls have really kind of been told and, and, and are priding themselves on, uh, you know, higher scoring, mm. more free-flowing games. And uh, the standard probably wasn't there in the second half. It probably yes. the intensity dropped right off. But uh, the a standard. couple of positives. Go. A couple of positives out of the game. There are positives, Liam. Don't yes. you worry. Oh, po- Brianna Davey positivity. was, uh, you know, the inspirational leader. Much That's like why what she's Mark captain. Murphy is for Carlton in the men's. Uh, she was very, very good. Uh, of course, the skipper racking up 16 possessions. She looked very, very good. Uh, new new recruit for Carlton, uh, Taylor Harris, also looked oh, very, very impressive. a few up nice miles. She looks very impressive up forward and uh, may actually snag a few goals away from Darcy Vest this year, so maybe that's one of the reasons why she isn't quite leading the goal kicking at the moment. But, but uh, Nicola Stevens was solid in defence as well. The Collingwood best defence now, new Carlton was. recruit. Yes, she was very, very impressive as well, and uh, they needed to be down in the in the back half there. But uh, of course, all that defensive pressure, very Ross Lyon like, I must say. Um, but uh, we should mention someone who uh, was a first-round draft pick this season uh, for the Magpies, Chloe Malloy. She was amazing. She starred in her de- debut game with 20 touches and looked like she was right at home, uh, the youngster as well. So um, she'll, she'll just keep getting better and better for oh, the course, Pies. Yep. Um, but, yeah, look, their, their efforts um, were trying to be quite attacking in that final term, but... Uh, 
their, uh, their efforts were stifled by a desperate cults and defensive effort um, that secured the points at the end of the day. But um, one of the big talking points out of this yes. game will be an incident that we saw um, against, uh, I think it was Sarah, Sarah Darcy. Darcy um, she kicked one of the Hoskin twins, one of the two. One of the two. They so, look the same. Yeah, I don't know if she was aiming for the right one, but... Um, <laughs> We assume that she was. Uh, it was. It was a little bit mal. There was definitely malice involved. Yeah. And, uh, this will definitely be looked at. Um, pretty much, uh, she'd received the ball, kind of got tackled to the ground, and uh, in an effort to try and um, alleviate some more pressure, let's say, um, she actually double kicked. So used both her feet to kick uh, Sarah Hoskin away, and uh, in a place where you don't want to get kicked. Where you don't want to get kicked um, with a particular boot that you don't want to get kicked oh, with. So um, it will definitely get looked at. Um, Could what do you be... think? Oh, I'm looking. I, I mean, definitely intent was there. So I'm going to say three to four. See, I'm going as far as saying that I don't think she's going to play again this season. Well, there's six more games. Big call. Uh, maybe the fact she hasn't got suspended might be six down the five. But I'm pretty. Sure they should go. They should absolutely throw the book at her. Yeah, because well, it was, I mean, we, it you was you a deliberate this the kick. It was a yeah. deliberate kick. I know we can go back to last season in the men with um the Toby Green incident. Yep, that's right. And the argument with Toby Green mm-hmm. um, was he had his foot out. Yep. To, st- to stop himself, to springboard off that's right, that's right. Uh, Dalhouse's chest. Mm. Dalhouse went down, got him in the face. That happens in every game, usually play on. Yep. Um, but this was a deliberate kick. Deliberate kick. In a place that you shouldn't be kicked. Mm-hmm. You know, if it, that, if it was a guy, oh, couldn't imagine how much pain, pain for that would be. Um, I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure she might be gone. And um, it, it, I, I'm, we're just watching it now, and it, yeah, it, it actually... I actually think play was still going when she actually did kick um, Sarah Hoskin. And, uh, yeah, looking very, very sore indeed. And, yeah, as I said, she she originally had a smaller kick at her and then had a larger kick. So she actually kicked twice. Mm. Um, a very small little jab and then a bigger one went in for the jugular. So um, we don't want to see that in the game. No. Uh, it should definitely be stamped out. And if a if a season ban is what needs to be done here to uh, to try and mark this out, then um, certainly well, that should be taken into consideration. Yep. And that's what we want to see. As much as Friday night's game was disappointing, Saturday's game was Saturday's absolutely game. beautiful. Melbourne versus GWS. Goal for goal. Oh. Intensity. Um, Three the last... times the lead changed in the yep. final quarter. Lead. The last quarter was absolutely unbelievable. Oh, wow. Daisy Pierce stood up, especially in that last quarter. Wow. Um, stall in the fence. Stall in the... She's she's just an all around superstar, Daisy Pierce. She is, isn't she? Yeah, you, you can't hold her down. Uh, despite the fact that she did get tagged for most of the game, she was quite. Um, she did what I think champions she was only do. Kept to about six touches at half time, but um, pretty much as soon as that happened, um, she exploded in that final term. She had thirteen of her nineteen possessions after half time. So absolutely right, oh. she exploded after half time. No one can really hold. Uh, champions down and, and she was absolutely outstanding um, also must be mentioned uh, Rochelle Cranston oh, as well Rocky. Big, is, is that what they call yeah, it Rocky Cranston big yep. Rocky Cranston and, and you are a big fan of you're jumping on the Rocky bandwagon oh like I said I, I looked at her Instagram the other day and she is a solid <laughs> a bit of unit. research she is a big unit a scary unit scary unit oh yeah so so she's into her protein she's into her heavy lifting and, Three uh, snags in the second half, plus the winner. Plus, plus a few snags after the game as well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming. I'm oh, assuming. Yeah, she, yeah, she's got to, you know, plenty of protein, up. plenty mm. of protein, absolutely, absolutely. But she was outstanding. Um, but after racking up eight disposals, Demons midfielder Karen Paxman went off with a bit of a back injury, um, which was later diagnosed as spasm, so not as bad as what we originally thought, but hopefully she'll be back next week or maybe the week after. But uh, Kranskin, once she did kick her second goal to start the final term and then slotted her final goal at the 15-minute mark, it looked like um, Melbourne were going to run away uh, victors here. But, yeah, only only a six-point win, so a very, very close game indeed. Must be said, GWS, considering they uh, run away with the wooden spoon, I don't know if you can run away with the wooden spoon, but I think no one was going to try and catch them for that. But um, considering they were the wooden spooners last season and they managed to almost um, defeat or upset, should I say, uh, one of the leading Victorian sides from last season, that's a huge effort um, and uh, almost had the wood over Melbourne indeed because they did they did beat them last season but 36 um, year old Irish recruit Cora I think it might be Str- Stranston 
Stronston. Stronston. Stronston um, was amongst the best players at GWS, the Irish recruits. You do like the Irish recruits, oh, Lee. Irish being, recruits. A, being an Irishman yourself, oh, yes. uh, being an Irish immigrant yourself, so um, it's always good to see them yes, play. And, um, I'm an Irish immigrant from Fitzroy. I must say, though, I must say there was there was one stage in the game where I think she ran a little bit too far. She did a bit of a Lewis Jetta, but um, she <laughs> they, they, they're going to cut her a little bit slack in the first game, uh, as long as they had a little bit of a word to her Someone afterwards. I was very pleased with... Um, Alisa Eva, the former Magpie, now GWS, yeah. 14 tackles. If you don't mind. And uh, that's a very Sorry, high tackle count. 13 tackles, 14 disposals. Very high tackle count for the uh, yeah. AFLW, that's I must That's a very say. high tack- um, t- tackle in count. General, yeah. In general, wow. I'm a big fan of my tackles, I believe, you know. That's Lenny Hayes-like. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> wow. Um, she, she didn't do enough to make my best top three when we get to that uh, later we will, on. We will get to that soon. Uh, the votes, we'll, of course, a big part of the sports desk, of course, yes. the inaugural AFL Women's Daisy Season. Pierce. And uh, just One continue. Yes, yes, she did. She did. Unfortunately, well, she wasn't able to claim it on the show, but hopefully this season mm. uh, we will get the winner in. Pretty much. Um, let's go down to the oh, grand final rematch. The grand final rematch. This is exciting. A big game for you. You had... It was a really good week. Three, two games had a big game field pre-game. Yeah. One had a big game field during the game, and then you had the free Bulldogs game. You did. You, you had did. a Katie Brennan field the other game. You're you're, you're still a little bit. Uh, you're you're still stinging after that. But well, that's all right. That's all right. Two years in a row, Katie Brennan only played two games last season, and in her first game she destroyed Frio. Destroyed. Played it. Frio again, destroyed Frio. That's probably her favorite pastime. I like long yeah. walks on the beach, you know, romantic dinners, and destroying Fremantle. And destroying Fremantle, that's right. Long walks at, um, the, of course, the Indian Tea House down by, uh, I think it might be Scarborough Beach or, or near there. Anyway, that's where she <laughs> likes to do long walks by the beach. Moving on, uh, so this was a Lions. big game before oh, the yes. bounce. We had uh, one of the best players, the most prestigious players in the game, Erin Phillips, ruled out before the first bounce. After she strained her quad, uh, quad and she I might say. not be making up against Melbourne either. She may not, which uh, which would be a huge out for Adelaide, considering when their best player goes out, they expose the rest of their side, and they were exposed on the weekend. The they Lions were. looked absolutely dominant from the outset, and after half half time, they absolutely notched up the intensity, um, sealing the victory four seven thirty one to three one nineteen. Despite only winning by a goal and, uh, well, two oh, goals two in goals, the yeah. end, um, they looked far more dominant than they that did. suggests. Well, Adelaide only scored in the second quarter. They did. Which only down on that game was, yeah, the fact that they only scored in the second quarter. The only credit I give to was their other captain, their forgotten captain, Chelsea Randall. Ah, yes. Um, kicked the goal, 18 she touches. Was she was very good. Um, she stood up like the captain that, you know, everyone kind of probably forgets she's the captain. They do. Siren, you got the... Probably the best player in that, well, second best player in AFLW behind. Well, I mean, she she captains in, what, three or four other codes? So she, yeah. she can't captain at all. Surely not. Pretty much. Surely not. But uh, it was it was, it was was Brisbane forward, um, Sabrina Fedrick Torb, who absolutely impressed me again. Seven contested marks out of her 10 marks, which is just another, a monstrous Talk about effort. another big unit. She is another big unit. She is a sizable unit. And mm. I'll tell you what, she's always in the action. She's she always is. so excited. She always gets around the girls. And it honestly, it looked like the Brisbane line Lions actually won the premiership last night. They were so ecstatic. And oh, they I mean, need, there was a big. There's probably a lot going on in that game. As much as I'm not a big fan of them saying, you know, once you beat, if you lose the grand final, then you beat the team. Oh, they've got redemption. Yeah. Because they're two completely different things. It was a big win for the Lions. I mean, considering they lost the very first AFLW grand final, we really don't know as outsiders how much that means to them. And uh, oh, it would have you know, so It would have absolutely stung. And uh, yeah, to lose at home as well, or or, or a second home, mm. let's put it that yeah. way. Um, it was an it was an absolutely outstanding effort from him. And uh, Jess, um, now this is gonna this is gonna trouble me a little bit here, but if surname. The German Jess Wustesner, I'm going to say we're going to go with that. Yeah, I, I, was, um, Wusch, Wusch, I, I was able to pronounce it before. Wustesner, yeah. yeah, yeah. She booted two goals in the third term to put the visitors in front, and um, incredibly, yep, yeah, winning uh, all in all by 12 points the final siren. So well done to uh, Brisbane beating yes, Adelaide at home and returning the favour. Uh, well, the, for a team that's no one picked as a premature favourite, they've lost one game in the entire history of the FLW. <laughs> It's not a bad effort. It's like, not, not a bad effort. The Brisbane Lions, it's going to be funny to say, but the Brisbane Lions aren't used to losing. They certainly yeah, are. In the women's, not the men's, of course. And let me tell you, they wouldn't want the statistic at the end of this season to be the only two games they've ever lost to be in a grand final. Yeah. So, let, so let's hope they can um, resurrect that uh, statistic at the end of the year. But uh, let's move to the final game of the round. And yes. Liam, I'm sure you're very optimistic oh, to talk I've got about this. this. I've got this. You've got this, don't you? So in the last game of the round, at the winning oval, the Western Bulldogs came out victors 7 7 40. 
49 uh-huh. against the Fremantle against Stinkers, 3-5-23. <laughs> Yes, um, when when you do put out the anchor, um, boy, do you sink. And uh, oh. yes, uh, the, the the Dockers uh, haven't had a lot to cheer about um, of late. And of the last twenty three years, <laughs> last twenty three years, yeah. you've been counting every single one of those. <laughs> um, but look, they 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 were competitive in that third quarter. They they did make a bit of oh, a fight. They were competitive back. in the second half, even even though um, Doggies did outscore them in the last quarter, two goals to none. Um, they were in the game pretty much up until the final assignment in the second half. But it was the first half. Uh, that was appalling. They were nowhere to be seen. Oh. Katie Brennan did laps. Did laps. Mm. She, she was just three. teasing him at the end of the day, wasn't oh, she? Oh, yeah. She kicked three goals. Um, Ali Blackburn as well. Sensational. Only oh, 22. 23. Only, oh, 23. She's only 23, 23, 23 years old. Yeah, well, 23 years oh, old. Yeah, 23 years old. Yeah. She, she's yeah, um, she's going to be an absolute superstar of the competition, um, Ali Blackburn is. Wow. Um, but, yeah, easy got out. Katie Brennan pretty much started off kicking the first two goals of the game and then kicked the first goal of the second quarter in, like, the first minute. Unbelievable. Uh, unstoppable. Let's go down to the ladder. The doggies now sitting first. <laughs> Gee, we, we, we previewed that game pretty quickly, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, so, the doggies, yes, yes, so the doggies sit first. Who sits last, Liam? Uh, well, we'll get that. We'll get, oh, that. We'll get to that. All right, all right. We'll apologise to the other, other, other team. <laughs> um, Brisbane sits second. Carlton third. Melbourne fourth. Um, then you've got the Giants, Collingwood, Adelaide. And that's it for the ladder. <laughs> and that's it for the ladder, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I thought got... we might have missed a team there. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. you got the Dockers finishing oh, the ladder. Oh, no. Yes. Sunk right to the bottom mm. straight away. Percentage of 46.9, so look, not the worst. Um, but, yes, it was a it was a great first round. And, of course, next week uh, we will be previewing uh, some of the big games there. I, I'm really looking forward to um, Melbourne and Adelaide and both Brisbane Lions and the Western Bulldogs, oh, of course. Four of the informed sides. There's two big games I'm looking forward to. One, not just because of the Perth Stadium, mm-hmm. but it's going to be pretty much the season. you got the Doggies and Brisbane. Um, you win the game, you're two, two wins up. You are. And you look at last year, um, Adelaide lost two games. Brisbane wow. didn't lose a game. Yep. And the Freo Column game, you lose this one, your season's over. I, I completely agree with that. Mm. And uh, Fremantle being at their home ground for the very first time, they're going to want to win that. In front but, of um, nearly 40,000, 50,000 people. Exactly. And the $2 entry, as we yeah. said, is uh, absolutely booming. Um, the before we go up. to a song and before we do our votes, mm. um, f- this is a f- um, stat compared yes. to last season. So, round one last season, mm. it was 28 goals, 40 points, 208, compared to this year, 35 goals, 32 points, oh, like 242. This. I like this. That's uh, that's great Let's effort keep by the our goals statistician going. man, Liam. Yeah. You, you you're always on fire if you start. Oh, I, I love my stats. What. I love my stats. But even but even um, the comparison of 35 goals kicked in four matches compared to 28 in round one is already looking so much more promising as well. And uh, yeah, it's already looking like uh, a, a more high scoring season, particularly the 13 goals kicked in the GWS and Melbourne game. So a lot to look forward to, a lot of excitement. Mm. And uh, we will be waiting with tenterhooks to see whether uh, Sarah Darcy does get suspended for that, as we expect she does. Let's get to yeah. a song, Liam. Uh, this is Match Between. Let's see how far we come. And we'll be back with the first after this on Sin 90.7. Coming a long way, as always, on the Sports Desk on Sin 90.7 FM. It is a pleasure to be back in the studios, of course. I am Michael. I'm here with Liam. And we are absolutely excited about this big day of sport. And it just gets bigger over in the United yes. States of America. Uh, before we do that, let's go to AFLW votes. We will, oh. of course. This Jumping is one too of far the ahead, mate. You biggest are, parts. You well, are look, too excited. I just want to get to the States. I just want to talk about the Super Bowl. Well, but, go. look. Very, very important that we do our votes because the votes are one of the biggest parts about the sports yes. desk on Monday the mornings, Sin of course. AFLW Player of the Year Award. For all of our local and loyal listeners from last season, we had major coverage over the AFLW and it's an Could awful season. Beat. We had a very, very close um, voting system, which uh, went right down to the wire. And uh, Daisy Pierce, of course, was the inaugural champion of the... Have we actually got a, a title for our award system? I just said the AFLW Player of the Year. Player of the Year? That's right. The AFL Sim... Sorry, the AFLW, yeah, Sim Player of the Year. Yeah, Sim Player of the Year. So we absolutely love it here on the show. We're going to start with Collingwood versus Carlton. No, we're, um, no, we're not. No. What's going on no, here? Those are just 3-2-1. Oh, 3-2-1? Off the, the entire round. Of the entire round? Yeah. Oh, damn. That's what we did last season. We did? Yes. God damn. I, I, I went for every oh, single well, game, <laughs> and, I, and I gave the separate well, votes. Well, do me do right. my, my votes while you... Do, do your votes while I'll, 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 I'll okay. sum it up. Jeez. Yes, it's not, it's not the brown over here. <laughs> oh, my um, God. I've got my first vote to Katie Brennan. Yeah, um, she would have definitely got three, and, but she dropped off, especially in the third quarter. Um, apart from that, she was sensational. Second is my two votes go to Daisy Pierce. 
for Melbourne. Yep. She stood up pretty much all game, even though she got tagged, got the 19 touches. Absolutely sensational. You know, She's probably by far the best player in the AFLW. Absolutely. And the third goes to one of probably the future best player in the AFLW, um, Ali Blackburn from the Western Bulldogs. Ah, very good. Very um, good. She has captained more games for the Doggies than the actual captain Katie Brennan has, <laughs> taking over. Only 23 years of age, so she's probably going to... You think she'll be the next captain on the club. You would think so. But, you know, 23 touches, one goal, two, um, seven marks, 20 kicks. Um, that's, she can't be beat. Not the, not the worst resume in the world, is it? No. No, nah, she's just going to keep getting better. Um, all righty, well, I've <laughs> summed up my votes. Um, so I'm going to give one vote to uh, Chloe Malloy. She was absolutely outstanding in the first game of the season, leading from the front for the Pies, where not a lot of their other players really stood up. She was outstanding. She was probably um, a close considering fourth. She was a th- <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she was, Liam. Um, so <laughs> first, first round draft pick, um, 20 disposals on the night. As I said, you've got to start the season off on a high. And I think, you know, as far as, the standard is concerned, she's going to be the benchmark for the Pies, and uh, she'll just keep getting better. I'm sure she got a big rap from Eddie Maguire as well from the end of the game. Could be poss- possibly a millionaire by the end of the year. Who knows? So our second placed player for me, I couldn't really go past Dally Blackburn. She was absolutely outstanding. Oh, 23 two, disposals, one goal. She was great. And look, my player of the round. Look, wow. I, I, I absolutely controversy love, here on the sports I, desk. Yeah, there is. There is. Look, it, it's it's definitely not um it's definitely not Erin Phillips. Um, that's for sure. It's incredible. She doesn't get a feature in the votes. Um, and also well, our, play. <laughs> and also our winning player of last season doesn't get a feature in the votes either. Oh, Just oh, because her con- first half she was kept very very nicely to oh, only. Con- Six disposals here. by Britt Tully, which i got to give a shout-out to Britt because she did an absolutely brilliant job on it. And she got 13 disposals herself and 11 tackles. But she doesn't feature in the votes, wow. and Ima does Daisy. A little bit of controversy. I know she had a great second half and almost won the game off her own boot for Melbourne. But I'm giving the three votes to an absolute beast, Sabrina Frederick traub I can't, I can't underestimate or overestimate this player enough. She is just brilliant. Um, someone who takes 10 marks and seven contested for the game and just looks like she's always a lively forward. In all fairness, Brisbane did kick a lot to her, so they do rely on her a lot. Um, they're going to have to spread that load a little bit more to uh, Emma Zilke, who was still very Zilke smooth um, in her efforts, but I've got to give Sabrina Fedrick Traub the free votes. Ooh, but also, a little bit of a, a little bit of a favoured mention to uh, Leah Kasler, who only kept the big Tex Perkins, who was huge in the grand final. Oh, only one, one touch, touch the entire game. So she was huge out of defence and really great for her rebounds. But I've got to give Sabrina the three because, as I said, you can't underestimate or overestimate the big players, um, and she's always a big performer. I probably would have put in my votes if she kicked a goal. Okay. She kicked three okay. points. She kicked three like, points. You can be a forward and take as many marks as you like, but your job as a forward is to kick a goal. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. But and setting up a bit she, of play as well. That's so why she didn't give feature at all in my votes. So a little bit of controversy. That's what we like here on the show. Yes. And besides, we, we do want we do want other players, you know, getting a couple more features than Daisy Pierce and uh, Aaron Phillips. You know, well, Aaron Phillips it didn't is an play, open so source. And Jade, she didn't play, yes. so, so she, so she can only give her half a vote yeah. for that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, they are the votes for the week. So um, yeah, and honestly, um, we've also got our Facebook page um on Facebook, the Sports Desk. And uh, if you feel like we have made a controversial call or we have missed anyone out, please hit in. Let us know. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll, Honestly, I, I, I did votes for every single game, but that's all cool. That's good. That's good. But we did mention them before anyway. I'll so have a look during the song review. You, you'll have to. You'll Anyways, have this to. is Highway to Hell by ACDC here on the Sports Desk on Sin 9.7. That was Highway to Hell by ACDC here on the Sports Desk on Sin 9.7 with Liam and Michael. Or Michael and Liam. Depends how you want to put it. Depends how you want to put it. Who do you favour more? <laughs> oh, then Michael and Liam then. Uh, Michael and Liam then, yeah. We, we both favour me a little bit more. Just a little bit more. You have character charisma. I have... You have a Fremantle Guernsey on. That's what you have. Yeah. That's the best I have going for me. Um, let's, yeah. start, let's start straight off with the NBA. NBA. Um, I just want to get something off my chest. But well, first, um, Super Team make the All-Stars again. Boo that. Yeah, um, yeah. We, we, we did cover boost, this on Friday. Yes. And we were just we were just thinking, how? How does a Slovenian get into a squad before an Australian? You know, come oh, on. I surely know. there's a bit more favouritism over the Aussie. And I mean, you know, slightly less points than the Slovak Slovenian. However, um, a lot more assists and a lot more rebound 50s. So he, he did look a lot better, even though there's no rebound 50s in, uh, <laughs> in basketball. 
He got, anyway, off, he got off from the 50 we get, yeah, we get, He absolutely had a beautiful set shot. Oh, imagine if they just kicked the ball far out. Oh, uh, I've tried that. Doesn't doesn't uh, feel no. too good on the feet, unfortunately. Um, go to the Cavs. The one thing I want to talk about is the Cavs. And last night yeah. they got absolutely bolted by the Rockets. Yeah. 122-88. But that's not <sighs> the issue. Uh, yes, well, cl- club, the clubs, the clubs. The Cavaliers are now 30-21. <laughs> Um, third in the East, but the Grand the East aren't a strong division compared they to the, the West. Um, but what happened after the game really mm. got into my skin. The Cleveland fans booed the players walking off the field, which annoys me because if it wasn't for Mr. LeBron James coming back from Miami because he loves Cleveland and wants to bring Cleveland to the championship, mm. they'll be exactly where the Browns are now, the Great. laughing stock of the league. Correct. Just you entitled fans, you selfish people who think you are owed everything in your life because of one player came because he loved, he loves Cleveland. Loves, loves the Cavs. And he gave you three, three playoff appearances, one championship, and you have the audacity. The audacity. To boo the man. Yes, granted, he's probably going to leave. And if I was him, I would already be gone. Yep, yep. You guys deserve to finish last next season. Mm-hmm. You selfish, selfish fans. Selfish. Most of you are probably bad wangers anyway. You probably don't even know any other player <laughs> apart from LeBron James. <laughs> but because you sucks in and get your bloody way, you cry like little babies. Oh, I hope Cleveland does not win another game for the rest of the season now. So do I, Liam. Excellent rant by you, as always. Oh, God, under my skin. We, we, we should almost have a segment, just uh, a standalone segment called Liam's Rants. I, I'm, I'm liking it. I've we, actually we... got a podcast dedicated to my rants, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Nice little plug in there. Look, it, it, it is disappointing. Um, whenever fans boo, I, I'm completely against booing in sport. Um even even when a player does do something pretty malice on the field, I do understand there is there, there may be are uh, grounds to start booing in that circumstance. The only Particularly time if I a player's been pretty badly hurt. But you know, you've got an absolute champion um, on your side, LeBron James, uh, one of the best players to ever play the game of basketball. And uh, you know, all players go in a bit of a form slump and uh even when, even when there are players, even in the AFL, if we if we even bring it home to the AFL, even when there's a player such as Paddy Dangerfield who who may go for a bit of a form slump, he he there may be common knowledge that he is leaving the Adelaide Crows. A Dangerfield form slump? What is that? Thirty touches a game, three goals. I don't I don't think they, they I don't game. think they ever booed him. I don't think the Adelaide Crows oh, fans no, and uh, Adelaide Crows fans are pretty you know are pretty feral. Um, and <laughs> no, and no, despite no, they that, did boo him at the start. His first game, they did boo him at the start, and towards the end they cheated him. They cheered him. There uh, but you yeah, go. But, like but it's you boo just so players that come back. You know, it's kind of a like a wow, you left. Boo you. But you don't boo the greatest player of probably our generation oh. and the team he played for. I doubt, I doubt they were actually booing him. No. Because, and he gave you success. But I mean, if if the Cav, if if the Cav fans, if the fans want him to stay, they're not doing any favors no, by booing him. I can tell you, he, he would be feeling quite hurt after that game. Um, he would have probably been wiping those tears away with a lot of hundred dollar bills. But it doesn't matter. The fact is, he would have been pretty hurt after that he's game. He's probably looking at his two trophies got from Miami, thinking, "Oh, the better times." But let's not take anything away from the Rockets. They were very, very good, winning 120 to 98. But yeah, as as we said, uh, the state of basketball in Cleveland right now. Isn't looking too great. They should all have a nice, hard look at themselves in the mirror. They should. They should. It's uh, it's looking a little bit dismal, but let's jump um, back. I think uh, the trade table is looking mm. the most likely option for yes. the Cavs here. Let's jump back to Australia quickly. Talk about the A League, Sydney FC. That's it. So next yep. spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Sydney FC. Sydney FC again. They're just too good. They've lost two games in the last two seasons. They are sitting well and pretty top of the ladder. Uh, I've heard that they're not going to do the grand final. They're going to give them the trophy. I think starting next week. Yeah, I like, remember, I remember when uh, I remember when Collingwood were um, at their absolute height in 2010. I, I'm pretty sure on uh, before the game, an absolute prestigious show. I think they actually just gave the premiership cup to them midway through the season. They just said, "Look, you're too good. You're probably not going to lose the grand final. Look, you may draw the first one, but you'll win the second mm. one. Uh, we may as well just give it to you now." Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Would have saved St Kilda the pain if they did, um, but yeah, Wellington Phoenix uh, couldn't score a single goal, and uh, Sydney FC were way too good on the weekend, four uh, nil. So they just they just keep doing it with ease, and uh, and uh, yesterday Melbourne City got up against the Brisbane Roar two one. Um, in Brisbane, so that would give them a lot of con- confidence. And the Western Sydney Wanderers up against the Central Coast Mariners 2-1. And then on Saturday, Adelaide United um, 
defeated Perth Not Glory. a good week for Perth. Not a good week for Theo Perth. Theo lost. Um, the Wildcats lost Perth's yesterday. What's going on, mate? The they, they, they got to get, they get you over there. They got to get you on a plane over to Perth and get you to fix a few things. The morale needs boosting, man. Yes. You, you've got you've got a lot of fire in your belly today. That rant was absolutely inspirational. I'm sure all of our oh. listeners out there can attest. Um, yeah, you need to get over there. You yeah. need to do something. The Wildcats lost to Adelaide 36ers yeah. last on NBL. The Perth Wild, well, I said Perth Wild. Fio didn't show up, only showed up for a quarter against the Doggies. And uh, I mean, Perth that's, that's lost. the Scorchers lost. Oh. And I mean, that's not the only state that is uh, struggling at the moment, of course. Um, in the Davis Cup, Australia. Are gone. 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 They didn't even end up playing the last game with uh, with the Demon, as we're calling him, or, or, or Demure as a lot of people remember him. Little Leighton. Couldn't get the job done, but it was um, it was Nick Kyrgios uh, who was quite disappointing in three sets. Was really, really dismal against uh, world number five, um, Alexander Zerev. Um, and uh, did it quite easy in the end. Uh, and Nick Kyrgios, after a really great Australian Open tournament, looked like the absolute air was out of his lungs and uh, throwing his racket on the ground, just showing his absolute frustration. Uh, a lot of medical timeouts as well for Nick Kyrgios during the match. Uh, a lot of elbow injuries, so not good for him. Um, and, of course, in the doubles, uh, Australia didn't do too well either. But uh, but on Friday, um, De, De, De Manoir, he did a lot better. He did a lot better. He... he, he he didn't win against uh, Alex Everest, but he did play a five setter. So that's uh, got to give him a little bit of confidence. But after making the, what the semi um the, the semi finals last year, going down to Berlin, I think not Berlin, um, Belgium. Yep. Uh, very disappointed to get knocked down in the first round this year. Exactly. U- usually Australia pride themselves uh, coming around to the Davis Cup and well, uh, couldn't Australia get the pride job done. Sport. We got to win the sport. No question about it. Um, last one. Let's go back to America. Back to America. Yeah, back on our plane. Don't know why we didn't do double America, double Australia, but I then, know, you know. I know, I'm feeling a little bit checked. Our producer's out, to not be here. Our yeah. producer's not here. We're all over the place. <laughs> I've lost I've lost my boarding pass. Yeah. Later. <laughs> it's gone. Yes. Um, the yes. Super Bowl. No, the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. It's going to be huge. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Amazing. Can't, watch, can't wait to watch the TV, to watch all the commercials. <laughs> all the commercials. Oh, the halftime show. So, who do you got? You got New England Patriots versus the Philadelphia Eagles. God damn, man. I'm just looking forward to Justin Timberlake at the halftime show, to be honest oh, he's with you. bringing sexy back. He's going to bring sexy back. He's going to have his bucks. You know, he'll be good. He'll be ready to go. Don't you worry about that. It's going to be a good game anyway. And uh, who are you tipping for this one? We've got um, the... I would like to see the Eagles win, but realistically, the Patriots got it in the bag. The Patriots, I think, have got it in the bag. They just they, had an they absolutely last season. They can be down thirty-one to three yeah. and halfway through the last, and well, halfway through the third, oh, I and believe that. easily win. So, but I, oh, I tell you what, I, I, I'm going to give the Eagles a little bit of a of a sniff here. I'm going to give them just a little bit of a sniff. I, I think against the odds, I think they're going to they're going to do pretty they're going to do pretty well. They're going to they're going to be down a little bit at the start, but I reckon they're going to get back into it. Well, but, the uh, Patriots were lucky to defeat um, Jacksonville. Really, they, they won in the last minute. They were. Where, um, the Eagles easily got over Minnesota, so... They've just got to find a way to stop the great, great man, Tom Brady. And if they can do that, I feel like um, I feel like it might be the Eagles' day. Like, um, this isn't, this, if anyone from the um, Philadelphia Eagles are listening, just, just, if, if he's on the ground, actually step on his arm, you know? Yep, you know. Whoops, he's... Oh, he's so, a little bit more so brutal now that he's 40. You yeah. know, he's a little bit more brutal. Just if you step on his arm, <laughs> if you hear something crack, you might be on your way. Like not no cheating tactics at no all. Cheating no cheating tactics at all, and no. we definitely don't implore that in the game of of, 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 NBA, of NFL. But uh, I tell you what, it will be a excellent clash, and uh, of course, Super Bowl. As you were just saying before, we went back on air four hours. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a very long haul. That's oh. for sure. A lot Can, of um, lot of toilet. So breaks. let's get our um, Buffalo rings ready, and we'll be sweet. It'll be nice and easy. I so reckon. So who do you have? I, I've got the Patriots. I've got the Patriots probably by. 10 plus. I'm going to be a little bit crazy here. I'm going to go the Eagles in a pretty close oh. one by three, I'm going to say. That was. You just saw the controversy today. I, I oh, love the controversy. Yes. I love the controversy. Well, I'm, all, I'm all brilliant. over it. I'm all over it. <laughs> all over it. And I had to do it in the votes as well. Yes. Anyway, Liam, it has been an absolute pleasure today. Oh, Thank always. you again. And um, this is going to be an absolutely outstanding uh, week of sport. Of course, join you on Wednesday as well. You'll Me be and back. Caleb and Ben, yes. Much more serious taking Much sport. more serious. Yes. Oh, yeah. And then got you and... Me and Neve on Friday mornings, along with Ben as well. So that's going to be very, very exciting as well. And we'll be previewing all of the big games on the weekend as well. So it's been an absolute pleasure as always, uh, Liam. Yes. Thank you so much. This is Sports Desk on 90.7.